he reacts. We want to get too fucked up. We got to talk about it to somebody else. We got to relieve that energy from ourselves, pass that energy onto somebody else, and then position ourselves to be more involved in the bullshit. And I don't want nothing to do with that. I have no, I have no desire to just babysit your bullshit. If you want some help, I got some help for you. If you want some help, I got some help for you. But you got to come and get it. And that's how I know people are serious because even though the Healing Place Transformational Gathering is really cost effective, for a lot of people it's not convenient. But when you realize, hold on, wait a minute, it's going to be this kind of help there? If there was ever a reason for you to take out a loan or do anything like that, it's to help yourself. Because this shit ain't for me. And then I was looking at the numbers and I got really fucking irritated because this shit is so expensive. My profit margin, I don't know about giving out no more discounts because the discounts come from my profit margin. I got to pay the hotel over $100,000. This shit almost $200,000 to put on and pay the features. And then motherfucker telling me that they can't afford a grand. What do you mean? I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. If you can't afford to participate in your own blessing, it's cool. Just don't ask me to help you be blessed. Hey, what's going on, Anthony? How you doing, King? And see, that's why I'm really about to shift and focus a lot of my energy on the youth. Because young people don't have these motherfucking excuses. These young boys will be out here cutting grass and they'll be raking it up. They'll be, they'll be figuring that shit out. They'll be collecting cans to be there. Cause I feel it. Cause I deal with young people more and more and they be hungry and they really do the exercise and they really be becoming great. I don't have time to convince adults to do what's best for themselves. Them young people, they be with the shit. They like queen, fuck that. Are we ready for our retreat? We ready. We ready. We ready. My son keeps acting up in school. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't believe in whooping him. Um, I don't believe whooping him is the answer. Maybe he don't like the school. Maybe they are not teaching him properly. Maybe allowing him to participate in trying to learn in a traditional westernized environment is too much like prison for him. And he don't feel good about it. And so he go in that school. And he feel like a prisoner, so he act out. So I would love for you to probably consider educating him in a different environment and then seeing how he reacts. Because because some people, school is not the fuck shit for them. They don't like it. They don't appreciate it. It's not what's happening for some people. Some people do not learn well in traditional structured environments. Like my eight-year-old son, if you yell at him, he melt down. He melt down like he totally shut down. It don't matter what you talking about after you start yelling. After you shut, after you start yelling, he just melt. So instead of keep yelling at him and try to force him to listen, I speak to him in a calm voice. I apologize for allowing my emotions to infiltrate the integrity of our conversation, and then I ask him, "How can I help you? How can I help you? How can I be a better mother to you?" Because right now, I'm not feeling like you're being a very good son to me. And it may be directly correlated to the fact that I may not be being a very good mother to you. So what's a good mother to you? And how can I be a better mother to you? I ask my son stuff like that. My Both of my children. Like I had to tell a good friend of mine the other day. She was working on doing something different with her son, and it's told it was something totally different than he than he's used to. And he was doing it, but he was whining while he was doing it, and he was, you know, rolling around on the floor and doing stuff. But I asked her, okay, but is he in the room? Is he in this room? And wasn't there another time where he would have just stormed out of the room and not paid you any attention? Okay, so we're making progress. He's in the room. So we got what we wanted. We wanted him to stay in the room. Now we have to talk to him about the etiquette of staying in the room. But let's not punish him for doing what we ask him to do. Just because we don't like the way that he did it. Is he doing what we ask him to do? 
Because if we punish him for having a reaction, then we teach him that it's not safe to show how you really feel with us. That means children grow up and lie to you because they feel like they can't be safe with you and the truth. And I don't want to precondition my children to feel like they're not safe with me. I don't want to ever get... And I love my lovers like this too. It don't matter what it is. Tell me about it. It don't matter what it is. Tell me about it. I don't care. We can recover. Even if we only agree to disagree and part our ways it doesn't have to be a situation where we hate each other because you felt like you couldn't be honest with me but when you overreact what you do is condition the people that you want to be honest with that they can't handle your honesty so you program yourself to lie to them so what I would love for us to consider is not programming our children to lie to us not programming our children to be deceitful to us or with us. Programming our children to stay true to their emotions and to feel their feelings. Hey, Uptown Boy, congratulations, King. Thank you for your support. May you bless your soul. So, the first few times that you do some new shit with your child, and even though they do it, they do it in a nasty way, Allow them to do it in a nasty way the first few times, but just make sure that they do it. And then now after they're doing it, we talk about the integrity of getting it done. Because we be like, sit down, and they'll sit down, and then they're sad because they're sitting, and then they start crying. You be like, shut up, wait a minute. You never make me sit down like this. I'm sitting down, but this is new, and I don't like the way that this feels. And this is something extraordinary from what we do in our other everyday normal lives before you just spent me with this whole, you're going to discipline me now and I'm going to be this version of a child that you've seen in a book or a magazine or read about. No, I don't like this. It doesn't feel right. In fact, it's quite restricting and I want to lay on the floor. So, I, I allow you to lay on the floor. And then I let you know, laying on the floor extends your recommendation. So, I'm not telling you that you have to get up. I'm telling you that if you make the choice to remain on the floor, it comes with an extension of your punishment. So do you want to get up? And then you talk to children like that, they'll say, yeah. Okay, well then get up. But I want to go outside. We're not going outside right now. But there are several things that we can do in the house. What would you like to do in the house? I want to ride my bike. No, we don't ride bikes in the house. But we do have several opportunities and, and activities that we can utilize. Do you want to write? Do you want to color? Do you want to read a book? Do you want to go in the kitchen and make some tea with me? Would you like to watch this educational video with me? That's the kind of stuff that I do. I don't want to do nothing with you, okay? But what you won't do is you won't yell at me. Am I yelling at you? No? Okay. Well, then let's not speak to each other like that because I don't like yelling at you and I don't want you yelling at me. Well, I'm upset. I'm so glad that you said you're upset. I love it when you express yourself. You're safe to express yourself with me. Can you tell me why you are upset? Because I want to go outside. Why can't you go outside? Because I was riding my bike in the street when a car was coming. Well, why were you riding your bike in the street when a car was coming? I don't know. Yes, you do. Because I wanted to go down the hill. Are you supposed to go down the hill when the cars are coming? No. Well, do you realize how dangerous it is? No. Then we go outside. And we go through a whole skit about why it's so dangerous to ride your bike down the hill when a car was coming and how dangerous it can be to pump your brakes and how people in the cars often have the radio on and they are oblivious to what's going on around them. So that's why you have to be aware of not only yourself but the people around you. But see that right there, that's parenting. And we don't want to parent because we live in a microwave society. So it's beat your ass and sit down before I fuck you up and know you can't go outside. See, I'm learning to parent. Because oftentimes growing up, I didn't have a parent. I had a give me that switch. Mm -hmm. 
Parenting takes work. What are good consequences for two-year-olds? What do they like? What I would love for you to consider with children who are that young that are actively being programmed significantly, like on a hypersensitive level, is to overtly reward them when they do the things that you like and totally ignore them when they are not in compliance. They will break down from the withdrawal that they will operate the way that you desire them to because children are often so intertwined and intertangled with these emotional cords that in the event that they feel rejection is so deeply seated that they will do everything that they can to not feel that feeling anymore. That's why spankings have an adverse effect. See, what children know is even if you spank me, you're still paying me attention. You're still investing energy into me. I'm still getting a reply from you. I'm still in the space that you told me not to be in. I still interrupted your phone call. I still didn't clean my room. I still left dishes in the sink. I still didn't mop the floor. I still didn't sweep the hall. I still didn't run the vacuum. All you did was spank me. And then we got right back to life as you know. It. But when you go cold turkey, when you go cold turkey and you give them no affection, they tune it all the way up. They do. I go cold on my children. Don't even talk to them. Y'all don't want to love me right. And don't let me have to clean my own house up. I got to clean up my own house where well, I can live here by myself. That even works in relationships. It has an adverse effect oftentimes, but most times when a person give you the cold shoulder, whether you know that that's what they're doing or not, it has it, it resonates with you a certain way where you feel like, hey, what the fuck you mean you ain't gonna talk to me? Like the first intense psychological effect of rejection is for you to hold on. Wait a minute, you don't let me go, I let you go. Stay. Now what, what do I need to do to get you to stay? How will you stay here? How can I be in compliance with you staying? Because you don't leave me. That works the same psychological effect with your children. They want your love. They want your attention. They want your affection. Overtly praise them when they are in compliance. And when they are not, give them nothing. Give them nothing. They may want you to be like, Mom, will you watch a movie with me? Daddy, can we go to the... No. Mm-mm. I even go so far, like sometimes what I would do, and I would only do this when it was like grave emergencies. Hey, Ricky, baby. Hey, Tori. I would literally make my children feel like they were invincible when they weren't in compliance. Now, the dichotomy of that is this. If you do not have a healthy parenting relationship with your children... If you do not have a healthy relationship with your children, text me, stupid shit. What it can do is it can push them further away from you. So, that's a dichotomy. Like, I wouldn't recommend that you give your children the silent treatment when you already have a estranged relationship and then you program them to not even expect or desire to receive any affections from you and then they won't ever do what the fuck you want them to do because now you are totally oblivious. See, um, the dichotomy of pushing people away is many of them don't come back and some of them never wanted to be there in the first place so they are like relieved. Like, ooh, stay your ass over there. Like, I, I recently had a situation where I noticed an individual who wasn't handling me properly try to create a distance from me temporarily, so I just made it permanent. You can stay over there. I'm good. I'm great. And that happens in different dimensions when people have nothing to barter with. So how do you barter with your children? What is your leverage? You, a, attention, affection, reward. What are you bartering with? What do you give in exchange for them to comply with you?
How? What do you give them? So if you are already not giving them proper attention, if you're already not giving them proper affection after you already are not giving them proper love, they're not going to miss it. So that's why it is so important for you to have some weight, some equity in your relationship with your children so that when something changes, they know. Honestly, the youth that's waking up and we need help, honest, I got y'all. Let me tell you something. I'm going to empty myself out for these adults because the family needs it. This is the last transformational gathering for adults, but they need it. And I'm going to make sure that there's an answer for whatsoever may be ailing them. And once I am done, the young people are my primary focus. The young people and all of those who are participating um, within our Healing Place Academy, our THP Academy, because we do activities and we read books together and we love each other and we have that component going on. But I'm coming. I can I literally feel the youth pulling me. Like I feel I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Yep. I'm on my way. A of I got gotcha. you. You are so powerful and beautiful and strong. You, dear queen, are so powerful and beautiful and strong. And that's how you notice my power and my beauty and my strength. Thank you. Thank you. My mother is 44 years old and still does not have it together. And it is not just the youth that needs help with parenting. I never said it was just the youth. Um, your mom. I would love for her to come to the transformational gathering in September. It would be great for your mom. What are the age brackets for the youth healing retreat? That is not until spring break of 2020. And it's probably going to be more like 16 to 25. Hard cap off at 25. I don't care if you just turned 26. You're not fucking with these young people. Stay away from them. Why 16? Because at 16 years old in the Americas, you can... um you can uh, be charged as an adult. 